In this video, we're going to use Unity and Bolt Visual Scripting to open and close our inventory panel, as well as use our item template to create some items and place them in a dictionary so we can call them with code in the future. Let's begin. Shall we play a game? This is part two of my complete inventory series, and because of the complexity of this build, I would strongly recommend taking each of these videos in order. If this is the first video you're seeing in this series, be sure to click the card at the top right to return to the start. If you're the type of person who prefers a written tutorial to a video format, I've posted a link on my Patreon page that will give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete each of these steps, which is free for everyone to use. If you enjoyed these tutorials and would like to help support my channel, be sure to choose your level of support on my Patreon page while you're there. As I stated in the showcase video, if you want the system but don't really care about building it, as my way of saying thank you to my top supporters, I've made the project files downloadable, not only is my complete inventory system included to these supporters, but my complete 2D player controller as well, which by the way, includes a simple enemy AI. With that out of the way, let's get started with this build. Okay, for the next part of this build, you're going to need to go ahead and select some icons that you like to use for items. And um, this is on itch.io. It's put out by a guy named Quintino Pixels. There's a link in the description below. If for some reason you don't like these icons, but you just can't find the ones that you want to use, you can always use these as a placeholder and easily change the sprites later on. Okay, once you get those items imported into your Unity game, you're going to need to, uh, a good place to place them. I would recommend creating a new folder, call it Items, and just place them right underneath there. Uh, one thing to note on each one of these items is, because they're kind of small, I changed the pixels per unit to 15. And uh, one more thing I'd like to note, I don't think I covered this in the last video, but I did cover it in the online tutorial blog. Under the item template that I had you make under the last uh, tutorial, um, you're going to need a Box Collider 2D on that as well. Before we start creating items here in just a second, go ahead and make sure you take care of this now. Set the X and the Y on the size to 1.5. Okay, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set our inventory game item as an app variable. The reason we're doing that is because we don't want to call this with tag. We're going to be calling this a lot. Every single item has to go through this inventory game object before it goes into these item slots. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to create an app variable. Just uh, select under variables, select app, and hit a uh, type in inventory right here. And uh, as you can see, I've already done that. Hit the plus sign. You're going to set that as a game object. It does not matter what prefab you use here because we're going to add this little singleton uh, principle underneath the inventory uh, flow machine, the inventory flow machine right there. Um, you're going to see uh, on start, we're going to set the application variable inventory, which is this right here, to yourself. So when we start the game, you should notice that this will change. It will change from item template to um to inventory so if go back to the app variable here you should see that right there it does inventory the next thing that we're going to need to do is clicking on our inventory canvas i had you set up a state machine last time and i had you set it to embed and you should see uh a flow state under there that's called start or something like that just um if you will click on it and under the title you just name that open it will change the name to open and that's what i've done right here going inside the open i have deleted the start and the up Update and or the update in the exit state I think is what it is I've deleted those and just left the on interstate and I've added uh, this um, flow macro um, so what it's going to do is on interstate it's going to set the canvas on your inventory canvas to true that's this right here that's what it's doing so whenever it's open it's going to check that on and um, it's going to set the end open, the inventory open variable on our inventory game object, which is this right here. I had you add that last time. It's going to set this to true. Now, the reason we're doing that is because when our inventory is open, if we, let's say, for example, press left and right on our character that's moving left and right or forward and back, depending on you have a 3D game uh, versus a 2D game, uh, we don't want those keys to register. So what we're doing is we're setting that inventory open variable to true so that whenever we press left and right, it doesn't move left and right. We'll set that later on. Um, but on our inventory canvas, when we open our panel, it's going to set that Boolean to true. And on the I key, which you can set this to whatever you want. I have it set to I for, I, I for inventory. A lot of games do that. I think Minecraft actually uses the E key. You can set that to anything that you want but I set mine to I, and it's going to trigger the custom event 
closed. And I'll show you where to locate that in just a second. The open inventory, uh, just right click, create a new flow state, call it closed. It's gonna be almost identical with the exception of when we enter this state, the canvas is going to be checked off. And we're actually gonna start that, uh, start the game like that. Uh, but this is going to set that to off. It's going to set the inventory open to uh, off as well, to false. Um, and then on our I key, on this, uh, when this state is triggered, it's going to trigger the open custom event. What it's doing here is on our open, if you will right click and hit make transition, you're gonna get this little squiggly line and just go and click on your close and you'll see this little arrow key, um, this arrow direction. Uh, this is the direction right here, by the way. That's just a symbol for the macro that it's missing a trigger transition there. Uh, so I'm going to delete that and show you what I have here under these transitions. From open to close, um, I just have this. It's very simple. Custom uh, event closed. It triggers the transition. So whenever this, when the I key is down and it triggers this closed transition, it goes right here and it says, hey, trigger the transition. So it's going to go from open to closed and back from closed to open. So that's how that works. Um, one last thing you're going to need to do is I believe uh, your flow macro is actually going to be set to toggle start. That one will be on and that one will be off. What we're going to do is we want it to close uh, start when it's closed. So we're going to right click and toggle start off on the open and make sure that that toggle start is set to true on our closed. Now you probably already noticed that I already have some game objects over here and I uh, got a bury a key, a mushroom, and a greater health potion. I'm going to show you how to set that up using our items template. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag in our items template right here in our hierarchy and you're going to right click that and um, you're going to unpack the prefab. We don't want to make changes to this, we just want to make changes to that. And so what you can do now is you can actually, um, you can actually create your items by uh, renaming it whatever you'd like. So if we went under our items, um, under our inventory, let's go to our sprite images that we imported in. And let's say, for example, what is this? What is, uh, let's see, a scroll. Let's do a scroll. So we got a scroll here, and I'm going to take, that's icon 24, I'm going to take that item template and I'm going to call this scroll. And um, I'm actually going to go right down here to our sprite renderer, where it says sprite, and I'm going to select item 24 which should be my scroll game object now so we'll see that and um, on the scroll variables here is the object variables we're going to set the item id um, so scroll here the item name we're going to call this scroll of power or whatever you want to call it under the description uh, let's say when you use this you feel powerful um, the cost of this, let's say it's going to be 100 gold or whatever um, number that you'd like to use, whatever value you'd like to use there, that's what this is going to set. Um, the item cap, let's say we can stack uh, two of these on top of each other. Um, that's what the item cap refers to. This is going to be consumable, and uh, so I'm going to check that little message right there. I don't know why we have inventory open on that. We don't need that variable. It must be on my prefab for some reason. Um, the con message, let's say when I right click this, this is what's going to display in the console. You can actually set this wherever you like. Uh, just, uh, I'm just adding some flexibility here. Uh, let's say whenever you use this, you are now so powerful, you um, scare your friends. I don't know, whatever. Whatever con message you want it to, to consume message you want it to display in the console, that's what's gonna come up. Again, you can place that wherever you want. But once I get that set, let's say I've got my scroll set here, we um, we used an item macro, um, so which means all of these things will be linked together. Uh, once you get uh, your items made, I would suggest making three, uh, make maybe four or five, depending on what, you, what you'd like to use here. You don't want so many that if you decide you wanna make a major change to it later on, um, that you, you have to go back to every single item because this is going to be pretty much set. I created a new folder under my prefabs and called it items. And as you can see, I've drug each one of these things into those um into this prefab list and, and once you drag it down here as a prefab you will notice that this turns blue right up here this means hey this is a prefab uh the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create an item dictionary and as you can see here i have one called master inventory list um and uh, we're going to right click the way i did that was right click create empty 
and I renamed it Master Inventory List. And on this Master Inventory List, we're going to set up an item dictionary. Now, as you can see right over here on the right side, I have created a, a, a flow machine on this, uh, set to embed, I believe at the start and update inside that graph, you're not gonna need those. You just need this variable object here. And um, this variable is gonna be called Master List, master list. It's an AOT dictionary. AOT stands for ahead of time. If you're unsure what a dictionary is versus a list, it works pretty much the same way, except for a list always uses whole numbers. For example, your list starts at zero. It goes up to one, two, three. You had, uh, three items in the list. You would actually read that as two because it always starts at zero. A dictionary uses whatever you'd like to refer to it as. So what we're here using here is a string. And um, what I've done here is I've just gone down here to new item. I've typed in string and let's say scroll is the item, the string that we're gonna refer to that as, and we're gonna set that as a game object. And I'm just gonna drag my scroll game object right there. And now I have it, I hit this little plus sign, and it is now a part of my AOT dictionary. I've done that with all five of these items. And uh, we're actually gonna use this later on, but now we can delete each of these items in our list there and under prefab let's drag our master inventory list right down here and we are going to delete it i just realized i made just a little mistake there if you do it from the hierarchy and then you delete the hierarchy items they are going to disappear in your list and if you notice i've done that uh, actually three times here um, where i didn't use the list and the way i did that is i went to my items here uh, actually let me go back to that prefab and lock the inspector here so that this item won't change if you click that little button right there this won't change no matter what else you click on um, going to my items here i'm going to drag those items back in so i need one for scroll drag it from your prefabs folders so that they don't disappear in here and the last one was greater health i also meant to mention on my key game object as you'll notice uh let me unclick that right there okay so going into my key game object you notice that i did not set the consumable to true because I don't want to right click this item in my inventory and use it. We'll set that up later on. So since it's not consumable, uh, the con message is not going to matter. You actually don't even need that. You can just right click that and delete it and make sure that you apply all. Okay, you should now know how to open and close your inventory panel on the key press of your choice as well as know how to use the item template to create new items and place them in an item dictionary that we will use much later on to call items in our code. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add items to your inventory after it looks for the first available slot. Hopefully, you were able to learn something in this tutorial. If not, hang tight because I have much, much more to show you. Thanks for joining me. My name is Megahertz, and I'm out.